Welcome back to Timberborn. I spent a little bit of time continuing to develop Beaverly Hills since the last time we streamed. So let's catch up with what I did. Uh, the first thing I did was I took these pine trees and I did mark out some of them to be chopped down because my wood needs, like I was having a lot of trouble because I'm using wood you know, I'm burning it in engines. I'm burning it at bakeries. Uh, I was not producing wood any faster than I was using it. So I really needed to augment my wood production, uh, which I successfully did. Uh, you'll notice that my wood is up to 1.1 thousand now. Now to contain that much wood, I actually had to build a wood storage facility over here. So you can see that I've got wood piled up over here. I've also got a bunch of little resin containers, these little golden containers here. That's resin, which I've also been collecting from those pine trees over here via this uh, tapper shack. So you can see all of these pine trees, they're dripping with resin, but the tapper shack isn't grabbing any of it because I've already filled up all of my resin storage. But I've got a bunch of resin storage. So where are we keeping the resin? Right here. I've got 350 resin stored up. So that's pretty good. Uh, the reason I wanted the resin was because I want to make treated planks so that I can build a mine. And building a mine here, I think is going to be the last big accomplishment that I make uh, that makes me feel like, I have succeeded at building the ultimate uh, uh, beaver settlement here in the diorama. So what that means that I need to do next is, well, there's a couple of things. One thing I would like to do is every time I have a drought, this entire maple forest just dries up um, and it stops growing. And I think that's a little bit annoying. So I'd like to use some of the wood that I've collected to actually dam it up up here. So we'll just put a simple dam up here, nothing fancy. But what that means is that um, instead of just all the water just spilling over the edge right here, uh, we're going to have uh, the water is going to get retained and then spill over. And so uh, when it, when there's a drought, this water will stick around for a while. It might not stick around forever. These trees are drinking it. It does evaporate. It'll eventually dry up and go away. Um, but it'll keep these trees watered for longer and they'll grow uh, a little bit more and it'll keep my, my wood production going. Now, I'm not actually certain that my builder beavers can reach all of this dam. Oh, look, they can. They can go around to the other side. Great. Okay, so they can reach the whole thing. So I don't need to worry about that. And actually, you can check that by clicking here. Yeah, so you click on your district center. You can see how far your builders can reach. And it looks like they can reach this whole thing. Unless unless they literally can't go one other step. And they can't, and they can't do the middle of that. We'll have to see if that is a problem. But the other thing that I want to do is build the ability to treat wood. So this is the wood workshop. It uses 250 horsepower uh, to make stronger planks, um, which are necessary for building a mine. It uses one plank and one resin to make each treated plank. And let's see, okay, d during the day when everything is operating, how much HP do we have? Okay, so it looks like we've got about 320 extra horsepower. So that's great. That means that uh, we can afford to run this thing. So I need to find a good place to build it where it can connect to... So you, yeah, you see like if I put it next to these machines and also uh, you can see right in the back of it, there's a little turning bar. So if I stick it right here, it will get power. And then I need to also connect it to a path. So let's put a staircase right there on that path and connect to it like this. And then uh, it's going to be producing treated planks, which I've actually already made storage for over here. Uh, let's also, at the same time, let's stick, let's stick a plank. Oh, wait, this is not for planks. Go away. Let's stick a plank storage right here so that we can put planks right next to it for it to uh, draw from, make things just a little bit more efficient. And just because we can, uh, let's stick a bush right on top like that. Okay, so the beavers will work on building this. And once they've built this, they're going to start generating planks, um, with, you know, treated planks, which we can then use over here to build a mine. Now, we've got other stuff going on here. So uh, during the period of time when I was um, playing this on my own off the stream, I ended up getting a huge number of unemployed beavers. And I was getting worried that my population was just getting a little bit too big. So I backed off. I actually I can't, I paused all but four of my ink little incubation tanks uh, to slow down the birth rate. And I got to the point where I had zero unemployed beavers. And then I turned it back around again. I re-enabled some of these guys so their population could start growing. Uh, this is one of the challenges of playing with the Iron Teeth is that you don't, you can't, you know, the, the, well, the, the, the folk tales 
uh, exhibit a lot of like very strong like population control and you and their population can't just spin out of control the iron teeth breed like rabbits and <laughs> you have to consciously take control over how the breeding is going okay so uh the coalition is running a uh, uh, a poll right now uh, of my viewers uh, asking it, after the zombie apocalypse starts uh, and you're and you're at Walmart what section do you run to um, and the question is, is it going to be the food section, the gardening section, electronics, toilet paper, or the clothing section? Um, it really depends on how bad the apocalypse seems to be. If it's like, oh, they've got this mostly under control, but d services will be disrupted for a while, I'm going for toilet paper. Uh, we've already got a bunch of food at my house uh, stored up. We can already last a little while. Uh, I don't think we've got nearly the supply of toilet paper, so I would go there first. But if it seems like it's a longer-term problem, I'd definitely go food first, um, and, then, and then maybe gardening after that uh so there you go that's my answer and that's a good way to you know spend time while we're waiting for this to kick in okay so we are now generating treated planks and we've got six of them so the question is how many treated planks do we need to build a mine well let's have a look the mine costs four thousand science and i built up a bunch of science uh you'll notice i, I was under a thousand science before now i have seven thousand so great um so let's unlock the mine and let's see what it costs. So it costs 300 logs, 450 gears, and 300 treated planks. That's a lot of gears. You know what? If I had realized how many gears it needed, I could have stored up those gears. That is a lot of freaking gears. I've got 212, which is nice, but where do I manufacture them? Okay, that's a grist mill. That's a smelter. That's a gear workshop. I manufacture the gears here next to the water wheel that's sketchy um because the water wheel dries up uh during during droughts so i'm i'm very nervous about how long it's going to take me to make that many gears let's start piling the gears into the mine and find out what happens um so the mine only required 300 logs um and continuing to make the planks that it'll take won't take that many more logs and in fact, I'm not actually sure when you're making a plank, is it just one log to one plank or is it one log to multiple planks? It looks like it's one log to one plank. Okay. So, but, so I'm questioning whether or not I could also build a monument at the same time. So the first monument is a labor monument and it only takes, only takes 200 logs. We can totally afford that. So a monument is, it's just another decoration, but it's a fancier decoration uh, that's got a wider area effect than most decorations. And it's sort of, it's listed in its own section in the well-being section. So if I want to really maximize my beaver's well-being, I was saying I needed to get the well-being consistently over 30. And right now it's varying between about 30 and 35. So I'm thinking that installing a monument might actually make me more comfortable in saying that I've achieved that goal. Um, because it'll get them up into a range where maybe they're not dropping down to 30 so frequently. So Malator asks if I've discovered a toilet paper house in Project Zomboid yet. By toilet paper house, do you mean a house that just has a lot of toilet paper in it? Or is it like, do they have like houses that have been pranked by people who covered them in toilet paper? Which is totally a thing people do in the United States for some reason. Um, so we've got a lot of beavers right now that are devoted to, uh, to delivering things, which means... I think they're kind of working full time trying to install this mine and they're just delivering logs to it. That's all they're doing. So they're going to deliver a bunch of logs. They're not delivering gears yet, which means we're not making new gears yet. So I, I think it might be a good idea for me to create a new gear storage just to create more capacity so that my guys will want to install, will want to start crafting more gears. So where's a good place for me to put gear storage? Um... Um, 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 I mean, I guess I could, I, it would make sense if it was close to where the gears are manufactured. But there aren't a lot of great places around here to stick new gear storage. Um, I mean, I could, <laughs> I could put some right here. In fact, you know what? I'm going to, this is stupid. I'm going to put, I'm going to kill that. I'm going to put a gear storage right here. And then I'm going to put one of these up here and 
a path back on it. So that's going to disrupt the path up to people's homes hardcore until we build it. So I'm just going to quickly say, hey, everybody, this is your new priority. Build this so people can get home. Let, hurry up, beavers. Build it. Build it before the day is out and everybody has to go home and they can't make it home. Come on, you idiots. Okay, good. We did it. Success. All right, so now we can store more gears, which means that my gear manufacturing center over here is someday going to make more gears. You can see they've emptied some of the gears out here. And we're getting closer to finishing the load. So basically, I think they just they try to put the ingredients in in order. So they're putting in the logs first. Once they're done transporting all the logs, they'll start loading in the gears, which we're going to need twice as many as we've got. I feel like I might need to also build another way to manufacture gears. How much horsepower does that take? 120, and it's not even maximizing it. So I could build another gear manufacturing thing over here, but I'm using most of the horsepower already. I would need to add like 50 more. I can do that, actually. Okay, let's just as a short term measure. Let's do this. So let's let's build that and then let's power it in part with an extra power wheel. And let's make these all higher priority than the one in the back that could block something. Hopefully this will work. So let me see. Uh, let me catch up with the chat while we're kind of waiting for things to happen here. So Malator says that the toilet paper house in uh, Project Zomboid is apparently a house where every container is full of toilet paper and it was added after the pandemic. Uh, that's, I do like that. That's a fun, that's a fun joke. It's a fun reference. Let's see here. Jedi Psychtrick says, you know, I've never seen Endgame beavers before. And on the one hand, I like, I'm like, dang, that used to be beautiful nature. And now look at it. Then on the other, I'm like, uh, but they're beavers. That is their nature, right? It's to build things out of nature. Yeah, no, that is true. Um, I think I actually, so in my mind, so when this place first started, we had water, you know, flowing through here and a few trees, a lot of dead trees, uh, some greenery alongside the river. Um, and then a lot of nothing and a lot of ruins. But now, like, over here, this was all ruins and, and, and stuff over here. And this was all just just ruins and no greenery whatsoever. There were skeletal trees around a lot of these areas. And now, yeah, I've built, like, a, a bunch of machines, a bunch of urban stuff. But I've also brought in a lot of greenery. I've spread the water out. Um, you know, it's so, like, if this, if this had actually been all green and natural and I replaced it all with machines... I w might feel like I've destroyed something, but this is actually much more of a like, like sun parched ruined world um, where there's just a little bit of life. And actually, while I'm adding these beavers and all their machines, I'm also expanding the reach of life. The map gets not only more busy and machinery filled and urban, it also gets greener at the same time. Um, and so I think I'm actually doing some good here. <laughs> Jedi Psychic says, that's some epic rationalization there. I like it. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, you know, there are fewer berries. The berries and the dandelions that naturally were evolved here are definitely getting crowded out by all the other beaver friendly plants. Um, so if you sort of are, are a believer in like pristine nature, you know, whatever state we find it in being better than a state we can change it to, then, uh, then yeah, what I've done is destructive. Uh, but if you believe in, you know, just sort of like any advancement of life is good, uh, then I've, I think I've accomplished some good things here. Okay. So we're devoting so many, oh, I made the workplace a high priority. I didn't make the construction a high priority cause I'm an idiot. Um, construction is a high priority over here, not workplace. So yeah, so if you set priority for the workplace, what that means is construct it on your own time, beavers. But then once it's constructed, somebody should definitely work here. And so hitting this button did not change how fast it would be built, which is what I cared about. So I did it wrong. 
But so let's build this quickly. So yeah, we have already piled all of our gears that we can into here, and we're starting to pile in treated planks. And so all of our treated planks and all of our gears are now going into this mine. And it's just a waiting game now. Uh, you know, trying to maximize our production of these things. So these are being manufactured fairly quickly, but we need, what was it, 300 of them? So that's like, you know, two... Three... Four, <laughs> counting to hundred to three hundred at that rate, and similarly, one, <laughs> two. Well, there's another one doing it, so it's about it's a little less than twice that rate because this one's going slower. Um, these, are, this is not happening very quickly, but it's also inevitable. So I'm kind of like. I don't know, what, should I, like, should we just hang out here and chat while we wait for this to happen? Should I try to up my, up my productivity even more in order to try to stay ahead of this? Are we just going to watch this monument get built? Like, what's, what's a good way, what will make this an entertaining show? So Coalition says that it's actually the gardening aisle at, at, at Walmart that uh, that won his poll about where people would go in the zombie apocalypse, uh, which does make sense. That is people that's like people exhibiting long term planning, and also the gardening aisle might be full of weapons uh, that you can use against zombies. Both very good arguments for going to that aisle. So Jedi Cytrix is suggesting that while we're waiting, maybe I should give a tour, like a review, because if I, I'm thinking this should be our last episode um, in the diorama challenge. Dang it! <laughs> my internet cut out again uh and so we lost a little bit of time uh in the game before i noticed uh that i had stopped streaming so sorry about that you did miss a chunk of video but let me show you what is going on so uh jedi Cytrix was suggesting uh around the time that i cut out uh, that i should give a tour of my little beaver town here but uh, before I did that, I realized that I really wanted to ramp up the rate at which my beavers are producing gears and treated logs. And so I actually started developing this corner over here to have an engine, to have another wood workshop, to have another gear workshop, so that we can raise the rate at which uh, my beavers are actually producing stuff. Now, I think I could actually, you know, make a connection here. Yeah, let's make a connection back here so that these are all connected to each other though i'm hmm yeah that's eh, that's weird looking but it's fine whatever i don't care um and then let's say that the middle ones the ones that are harder to reach let's make these lower priority so the beavers will work on the other ones first and then i'll slowly recover their pr priority over time so yeah, so while the beavers are building that, they're sort of building towards being able to produce the two ingredients that I need much faster. We need to have more gears a lot faster, and we need to have more treated planks a lot faster. So hopefully we'll actually get there. In the meantime, let's do what uh, Jedi Cytrix suggested. Let's give a tour of this place for anybody who joined us late or just wants sort of a review of, of everything that we accomplished. So when we first started out, we just had this little district center and a bunch of beavers lying on the ground and one of the first things that we did was uh, we started pumping water out of the nearby river over here and uh, we we built a, a place for them to, for the beavers to live we started building the, the very first foundation of this massive apartment complex and the storage complex that adjoins it over here most of this tower if you peek between the, the beams here these are boxes of, of equipment and uh, of boxes of resources so we, we just started building a few little houses and a few little resources and places to process food. And we started sort of farming around here. And as, the st as this place grew, we just piled apartment on top of apartment on top of apartment. Because this map has so little space, building vertically was the only way we could possibly fit everything that we needed. And so as we so slowly started growing, we built more water pumps over here. Uh, we started building actually some of our early factories. We built over here. Oh, in the water with water wheels running them. The problem is a drought just hit, which means that these water wheels 
have stopped moving. And that means that our gear production has just dropped because one of the places where we manufacture gears is right here on the water wheels. So it's kind of sketchy, but you don't need gears that often. And so what I did was I just built a lot of storage for gears. I could store up to 200 gears. So anytime the water wheel was running, I would be collecting a lot of gears. And anytime it wasn't, it didn't matter because I wasn't using them that fast. Unfortunately, when I just started building this mine, I suddenly used all of the gears I had in storage and now I'm in a little bit more trouble. Uh, but droughts were a problem, partly because they stopped these water wheels and partly just because they dry out everything. I needed to hold on to water. With the rate at which I was pumping water out of here, I needed some way to hold on to more. So I tried a couple of things. One of the things that I did was I built this wall right here, which raised the level of the water. You can see the original channel. You can see how where it's deeper water here and shallower water here. The original channel was just this trickle down the middle of the map. And these areas over here were actually... Uh, they were arable land, but they were dry land. And up here was just parched land you couldn't do anything with. So I built this wall which ra and, and, and a dam over here, uh, which basically raised the level of this water, spread it out a little bit more, spread out the arable land a little bit more, and gave me more space to build these pumps. And so these pumps, they would not dry out the river anymore. Back when the river was only half a tile deep, uh, half a block deep, they would pump the river out every drought. But now that uh, the water is, is one and a half tiles deep in these spots, they don't pump the whole thing out. They pump a lot of it out. Actually, some of my, my uh, water crops here do get dried out if I don't pay attention. Um, but yeah, they, they, the water lasts a lot longer because we built this wall. So after we built this wall, that's when we built uh, a lot of this stuff that's out here. But then we built the cistern. Uh, we wanted a way to hold on to water longer term to have a more reliable source of drinking water that we could pump out. So we built this enormous thing. Actually, we built it in two stages. We built a big square one first, and then we extended it out here when we realized we needed more because our droughts are now like eight or nine days long, which is kind of ridiculous. So we just barely added this dam up here so that now that uh, now when this when these sources of water dry up, we still hold on to some of this water and we keep these maple trees growing, which is nice. But the waterfall stops, we hold onto this, and then as this water down here dries out, uh, and as we pump the water out, uh, we can release water from this tank and dump it back into here to keep our, uh, our, our, our aquatic crops alive. In the meantime, we eventually built um, some... Uh, there used to be a bunch of ruins out here, which we started scavenging for metal. And we started sort of smelting and processing the metal over here and uh, and running all of these engines using that metal. Now, these engines let us run a lot more industry than we can do just on our own with, with these uh, unreliable water wheels or these labor-intensive beaver wheels. What are we missing here? Oh, crap. This is sucking gears. Okay, great. So we're going to spend some of our gears building this engine. And eventually... Oh, we can't get to this. Dang it. Let's prioritize this guy. And eventually, this is going to increase the rate at which we generate gears. But for a little while, it's going to reduce it. Fun. Um, oh, well, whatever. So one thing we put a lot of effort into was building... Um, decorations around. We started putting these uh, bushes, these little roofs, uh, and we built just now, we finished this monument, uh, which is great, uh, which you notice our beaver's happiness is now up to 36, which it wasn't at before because they now have a laborer monument providing them with awe. Uh, that's a plus three to their happiness. And because the monument is right here, because we've got all of our beavers living in a central place, that means that they come home every day and they always see this statue. So every beaver, every single time, is going to get that boost to their happiness. So we're now solidly above 30. And there's nothing risking a, a, us, us dropping below. So that's really cool. Um, okay, it looks like our water is starting to dry up enough that our Lido's here uh, are not collect collecting any water. So we built these because they're another source of beaver happiness. Uh, we've also just kept expanding our range of different food types. So we've got these guys here that collect chestnuts from these chestnut trees. We've got this uh, tapper shack, which collects maple syrup from these maple trees. We've got this aquatic farm right here that's farming cattails. Um, and another aquatic farm over here that's farming spatter dock. And we basically just got a lot of different food sources feeding into all of these grills and bakeries and, and all of these little like grist mills that are milling things into flour. Uh, we just got this whole food infrastructure that is making our beavers happy by giving them variety in their diets. 
And so that's basically it. So we, we kept expanding like our, our tree cutting operation to keep being able to feed logs into uh, you know fueling our bakeries and also fueling our construction projects. And that brings up to the present where we have now built an, a new engine, uh, a couple of wood shops, a couple of uh, gear manufacturing shops, which hopefully means that these beavers are now going to keep filling up uh, the coffers of this uh, mine until it has uh, until we've built it. So that's it. That's how we've oh oh check this out though. We've just dried up this area and these guys are going to die in half a day. So we're going to have to re bring down the floodgates and fill this area back up with water, including the cattails. Come on. Okay, good. Cattails are watered again. Oh, but that was not very much water. We still are missing some. So we got to take it down even one more level to fill it up with water. Okay. So we've only got a tiny bit of water left now in the cistern. Just one more half tile of water that we can uh, that we can release. And even that might be pumped out real quick by these pumps. So... Luckily, we've only got three and a half days of drought left. Hopefully, that's not going to be so much that it kills all of our aquatic crops. But La Coalition is warning me that we're only five minutes from when I have to leave for my meeting, which I think means I'm probably not going to be able to wrap this up right now. I want, you know, I don't want to end this. Uh, I don't want to end this. Uh, series until we've built the mine. But I might have to save the mine for a little bit later uh, and just sort of like do a little end cap on the end of this that shows the mine built and it celebrates the success of Beaverly Hills. Look at that little beaver up there. He's so proud of himself. So, yeah. But hey, you know what? I mean, this little review is fun. This is a good idea, Jedi Psychics, to kind of go over all the weird little things we've built, like this carousel. Which, you know, not a lot of beavers get to ride the carousel. It wasn't a huge... Because there's just... It, it only has limited capacity. We would probably have to build another one, really, to sort of up the rate at which beavers are able to do this. But it's still really cool, and I like it, and it's cute. And once the evening starts to fall, the beavers will come up here and use it occasionally. But yeah, I think that with my meeting incoming, I should probably wrap this up for now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap my fingers right now and sort of cut ahead to a time in the future when my beavers have finished the mine. We can look at it. We can celebrate the completion of this diorama challenge and hopefully our survival of this drought. And uh, yeah, because I mean, we've got two and a half days left, right? There's a chance that I might dry, end up drying out some of these crops and a few of them might die and get replaced, but nothing fatal. My computer, my um, my community is really, really resilient, and we just hit uh, a new tier of happiness that we've never hit before, and that's really cool. Um, let me have a look at the monuments, actually. So if we spend three thousand science, we can build a monument that costs four hundred planks. Most of my planks right now are needing to go into the treated planks, so I, I'm not going to build this quite yet. But I'm going to unlock it, and maybe building this should be sort of the last remaining thing that I do. So, all right. So yeah, I'm going to end the stream right now. Uh, but I'll come back to this. I, I don't know if I'll come back to this in a later stream or if I'll just come back to this on my own to put an end cap on it. But either way, whatever happens, it'll happen after this. All right, I'm back. Uh, there is no audience anymore watching me live. This is just me after work showing you the very end <laughs> of what we're trying to accomplish here. So I've got my mine here. I've actually waited long enough that now uh, it's got 450 gears. It's got 295 treated blanks. It is very close to the end. So let's unpause and watch them actually build this thing. I've never actually successfully built a mine before. So it'll be interesting for me to see what this looks like in action. All right, I think that might have been the last plank. Yeah, so now we've just got to get some builders up there to actually build the thing. So I guess that'll happen in the morning. Uh, I did end up losing a crop of my aquatic crops uh, during that last uh, drought. And so if I were to continue with this, uh, with this community, I might need to expand that giant water tank so that I've got more uh, to last through long droughts. For right now, though, I, I still think I'll be pretty satisfied with this ending. Oh. 
does this require this requires power how much power does it require does it say I think okay we'll grab scrap metal okay so it looks like it needs to get an input of gears and treated planks in order to produce scrap metal Okay, so I didn't realize that. I thought it was just going to be just generating it, but I need to be producing gears and treated planks all the time. Well, I'm glad that I upped my uh, production of those things uh, so that I could actually do it. And, oh, okay, cool. So, okay, so that, it, that, I was worried that that icon over it was saying that it needed power, but no, that icon meant it can't work because it's missing stuff. Uh, so, all right, well, now I can actually, I can get as many beavers working here as I want to, uh, but... Oh, that actually means that I, I, I actually probably should raise my population in order to get this thing fully working. But, okay, so yeah, basically they're just going to collect as many gears and treated planks as they can, stick it in here, and create scrap metal. And that it can do indefinitely, whereas this right here, which I've got a scavenger working on, this will eventually all go away. This will last forever, but I have to keep feeding planks and gears into it. And the planks and gears, the treated planks and gears, they come from trees, which are renewable. So basically, this is a renewable resource that provides scrap metal. So, all right, so we're basically taking full advantage of all of the resources here. Um, we've also got, uh, you know, we've, we've built up our population to support it. We've got a happy bunch of beavers. Their average well-being is 33. Uh, and it varies a little bit each day from, you know, get, gets down as low as 31, 32, up as high as 35, 36, just depending on which beavers get to which sources of entertainment at what rate. Uh, but by and large, I think, I think we've kind of done what we set out to do here. So, you know, what? one last thing I'd love to do to just sort of cap this off. Uh, I've completed a staircase going up to the very top of this roof. I think I'd like to stick a capstone on this. So let's go to the monuments. Let's grab the Flame of Progress, and we'll stick the Flame of Progress on the top here. Now, the Flame of Progress requires 400 planks. Uh, I've got 209 planks right now, so I mean we'll be able to load those up pretty quick. Uh, but then we're gonna have to keep generating a whole bunch of planks uh, to build this up. So, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking I should probably snap my fingers again. All right, there we go. We've done it. We've got a flame of progress. Uh, we've got a capstone on the top of our tallest building in a map where we had to build vertically in order to get anything done. And uh, now because we've got this, uh, our happiness is going even higher. All of our little beavers, every day they're going to run underneath this thing. They're going to see it and they're going to feel a sense of awe. Oh, holy crap! And we just hit 40. We just hit a well-being score of 41. <laughs> I was toying around with the idea of setting 40 as a goal, but I actually was like, nah, what are the chances I'm going to get all the way up to 40 in this map? But it looks like we've done it. So we're taking advantage of all of our resources. Uh, we've, you know, we've got their well-being up to a pretty astronomically uh, high level. We're farming every possible uh, type of food and we do pretty well surviving droughts. I think if I wanted to improve this further, I could probably build the the third awe monument, which requires um, power, which would take a lot of, I don't know, I'd have to make this a little uglier, basically, in order to get power up to it. So, not really that interested in doing that. Uh, I could also expand this tank to make it easier for us to uh, survive droughts. Uh, but similarly, I, mean, I don't feel like that's really necessary. Uh, I mean, I think we've demonstrated that this can work. So I think we've succeeded. I think that our uh, diorama challenge is 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 done. We've completed it. So uh, thank you for coming with me on this journey. And thank you to all the people who have been watching live, even though none of them are here right now to see the ending. Hopefully a bunch of you will come back and uh, check this out later. And whew, okay. 
So I guess I've uh, I've cleared out some room on my schedule, so I need to go and try out some new games. I've been playing Timberborn on this channel regularly for quite some time, but let's give the game a little bit of a rest. I think it's technically still in early access, and so, you know, there's going to be advancements coming in the future. I'm probably going to come back to it again and try something else new. But for right now, uh, let's wrap this thing up. So if you want to subscribe to my channel, there's a button. And uh, here's links to other videos, including the next time I do come back to Timberborn, whenever that is, that video will go there. <laughs>